Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and we're about to play Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. For your convenience, I've added timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade is a game designed around the popular anime series Cowboy Bebop which takes place in 2071 in space. It's a competitive deck building game for up to four players. Take on the role as one of the bounty hunters aboard the spaceship Bebop to capture wanted criminals in the galaxy. By capturing bounties, you'll gain rewards that give you renown points. Together, the hunters will finally face off against Vicious, ending with his capture or escape. Whoever has the most renown at the end of the game will win. Place the three planet boards, common deck board, damage board, and the bebop ship board in the center of the table. Place a fuel cube on the one space for the three planet boards. Place the miniatures for Spike, Jet, Faye, and Ed on the bebop board. All four are used regardless of player count. Also, the game comes with cardboard standees if you prefer to use those for the characters instead of the plastic minis. Create supply piles of the renown tokens, capture location tokens, and vicious tokens. Set aside the vicious card and create three criminal decks, one for each planet. Each should have starter criminal cards. These are the ones with a zero point value in the sheriff star. Shuffle each separately and draw one from each. Place these criminals on the corresponding planet boards. Add the indicated number of capture tokens on the spaces for them. They'll have a resistance pile and an investigation pile. Combine any remaining criminal cards with their corresponding planet deck and shuffle each separately. Now you'll create the criminal draw deck based on the number of players in the game. From each criminal deck, draw cards and create a new draw deck. With two players, draw three from each deck. With three players, draw four from each, and with four players, draw five from each. Shuffle this new deck and add the vicious card to the bottom. Shuffle the bottom three cards of the deck so the vicious card will be one of the bottom three. Place this criminal deck on the big shot stand. Return the unused criminal cards to the game box unseen. Create the damage deck with the 30 damage cards. Each damage card has this red cross icon in the top right corner. Shuffle it and place it on the damage board. Leave room for a discard pile. Create four basic decks of 10 cards for the four possible players. The basic cards show a B in the top right corner. Each player's deck will have six neutral cards and four colored cards that correspond to the character. Let everyone choose their character and take the character's basic deck and the character board. Unused characters can be returned to the game box. However, keep all the character's figures on the Bebop. Shuffle the character's basic decks and set them face down to the left of their character board. Leave room for the discard pile next to it. Each player should take a fuel cube and place it on the one space of their fuel gauge. Create the common deck of 92 cards and shuffle it into a face down deck added to the common deck board. Reveal the top five cards and display them in a row face up near the common deck. This is known as the purchasing area. The jazziest player will be the first player. Turns will go clockwise. The first player draws four cards from their shuffled deck, while the rest of the players all draw five cards from their decks. Being a deck building game, everyone will have their own deck of cards. While each deck starts the same, over the course of the game, players will get to gain new, stronger cards from the common deck. Sometimes cards in the deck can be permanently removed to make the deck more efficient. Each player's general goal in a deck builder like this are to add new cards to their deck to gain more powerful abilities and create interesting card combos to maximize their effects. The more you buy cards and draw them, or the more you remove ineffective cards, the better you'll optimize your deck. With an optimized deck, your odds of drawing useful cards on your turn are dramatically improved. On a player's turn, they'll play, use, or discard cards from their hand to accomplish different things. At the end of their turn, all the cards they played or are still in their hand are discarded into their personal discard pile. Then they'll refresh their hand by drawing five cards from the top of their draw deck. 
deck. Play continues to the next player clockwise. When a player should draw a card but the deck is empty, then they shuffle the discard pile to create a new draw deck and keep drawing the cards needed. To play a card, you'll put a card from your hand face up in front of you. There's no cost to this. The card then immediately provides the resources shown on it and its effects are triggered. Any text that says you may lets the player choose to ignore it. Resolve all the card's effects before doing another action. To gain new cards, players can play cards from their hand to earn Wulongs, which are the currency of the game. The total Wulongs from cards played can be used to buy the face-up cards in the purchasing area. Newly purchased cards are placed directly in the player's discard pile. Then immediately replace the empty space in the purchasing area with a new common card from the top of the deck. Wulongs can also be used to activate an effect on a card played this turn. Some cards provide you the fuel resource, which is gained and kept between turns. The fuel of a player is kept track of on their player board with the fuel token. Fuel is spent or gained by moving it along the fuel track. No player may store more than 10 fuel at a time. Each of the planets has a fuel movement gauge, which starts at 1 but can be modified in different ways during the game. When a new criminal is revealed after a previous one is captured, but the new criminal card's depicted planet is already occupied, then the gauge moves up 1. If the gauge was already at 3, then the criminal escapes. When a criminal is captured or escapes, the gauge is reset to 1. The two primary ways to capture criminals involve strength and clues. Both are temporary resources that are only usable on the turn they're earned. Some cards provide a strength number, which is used to engage in combat with the criminals. By succeeding in combat, players take the criminals' resistance tokens. However, they'll also draw a damage card for each resistant token earned. Other cards may provide the clues resource, which is used to investigate criminals and capture them by surprise. Doing it this way avoids taking damage while removing capture tokens from their investigation pile. Either way, the criminal becomes weakened and is eventually captured whenever one of these piles is depleted. As criminals are captured, new ones are drawn and take their place. Eventually, the criminal card Vicious is revealed and added to a planet board. The game will end once someone defeats and captures Vicious, or the last card of his movement deck is revealed. Most of the game's components and method of play revolves around the different cards in the game. The common deck and all the basic cards that make up players' starting decks are known as action cards. These are the primary cards players will play to gain resources, trigger effects, and do actions in the game. Most of these have a dominant color, which is associated with the character shown in the top left corner of the card. Four playable characters, so four colors. The gray action cards that start in the basic decks are neutral. Some action cards also show a different character and color in the box at the bottom. These are known as the card's team effects. The purple color is for the character Jet Black, the orange color is for Radical Edward, yellow for Faye Valentine, and blue for Spike Spiegel. The team effect of a card is only resolved if the character shown is also played among the other player's cards. It doesn't matter the order of the played cards. Once the matching character's card is played, you may return to resolve any team effects from cards already played. If the character was already played previously, then resolve the team effect on the newly played card with its other effects. A single character's card can activate all team effects that match. The criminal cards share the same card back, but each has a designated planet they can appear. Check the right side of their card for the planet, which will be useful in setting up the game. Each criminal is worth a number of renown points, as shown by the Sheriff Star next to their picture. By capturing the criminal, players will gain renown tokens, which will tally up at the end of the game to determine a winner. Each criminal card has two piles of capture tokens placed on them, the resistance pile and the investigation pile. The capture tokens placed must match the planet shown on their card. The left number next to these piles is the number of tokens to place on it when the criminal is revealed. The red icon's number to the right of the resistance pile is the number of strength it takes for a player to gain a resistance capture token. Likewise, the white hex icon's number to the right of the investigation pile is the number of clues necessary to gain an investigation capture token. Additionally, some criminals have an appearance effect that triggers as soon as the card is placed on the corresponding planet. Vicious is a special criminal card and works differently than the rest. 
Once the vicious criminal card is drawn, you should determine which planet he appears on by creating his movement deck. Take all the discarded criminal cards and any remaining criminal cards in the deck and shuffle them together. Captured criminal cards players have near their board should remain next to them. Place the new movement deck on the big shot stand. Reveal the first card of the deck to determine which planet Vicious appears on. Move his miniature to that planet and discard the criminal card without any other effect. If Vicious should move to a planet but he's already there, instead increase the movement gauge by one. Otherwise, moving him to a planet does not affect the gauges. Vicious's card should sit between the planet boards. Then add the Vicious tokens on his card. The number of tokens added is based on your game's player count, from top to bottom, for two players, three players, or four players. The damage cards have a red cross icon in the corner and are shuffled into a damage deck at the start of the game. When players attempt to attack criminals by using strength against the criminal's resistance, players also take a damage. For each resistance token taken from a criminal card, they must draw a damage card from the top of the damage deck. When drawn this way, immediately resolve the red exclamation text's effects. It may indicate to remove the card, add it to the player's discard pile, or place it on top of their draw deck. When the card is added to the player's deck, it is now treated as an action card. Whenever that player draws that damage card from their deck, they may play it for its action shown at the bottom in the gray text area. Typically, the effect allows the player to remove it from the deck permanently by paying a cost. If not doing the effect, the card is kept and placed in the discard pile at the end of their turn. Anytime the damage deck becomes empty, shuffle its discard pile and create a new damage deck. At the start of a player's turn, they may have five cards in their hand drawn from the end of a previous turn. It's possible card effects force them to discard or draw more cards before the start of their turn. In that case, they may have more or less cards to use during their turn. Now they may take as many actions as they like in any order. Cards in their hand can be played for their effects. Resolve the team effect of a card only if the depicted character also has had its card played. Remember, the team effect can be triggered after the card was played if the player plays the matching character's card later in the turn. Some cards have an effect that can modify a movement gauge by plus or minus one. The player may choose. Action cards from the common deck can be purchased for their Wulong cost in the corner. On a player's turn, they may spend generated Wulongs on the face-up cards in the purchasing area. Immediately draw a new card from the deck to sit in its place in the purchasing area. The purchased card always gets added to the player's discard pile, which will eventually get shuffled and drawn. Multiple cards can be bought on a turn, as long as they have the Wulongs to spend on each. The purchasing area can be completely refreshed by spending two fuel. Remove all five and draw five new cards to form a new purchasing area. The player may choose to move their character between Mars, Earth, Ganymede, and the Bebop. They may move multiple times as well, but must still pay the movement cost with fuel for each location moved to. Each planet shows a movement gauge with its marker representing the current cost. The gauge represents the difficulty of locating a criminal there. Moving to the Bebop always costs one fuel, and at the beginning of the game, each planet's movement cost is one. On your turn, you may choose to use your character's abilities as shown on their player board. Each character has two specials, an A and B ability, which are done by spending fuel. Your character's abilities are the ones in your character color extending from their artwork. Check the fuel cost on the left. Fuel will be spent by moving the fuel marker down on the player's fuel track. The other gray text boxes shown are the A abilities of the other characters. As long as you're in the same location as another character, you may spend your fuel to do their A ability. Check page 17 of the rulebook for full descriptions of each character's A and B abilities. The last main action a player can do on their turn is to confront criminals on the planet their miniature is located. I'll explain more on this in a second. Once the player decides they're done taking actions, they declare the end of their turn and move all played cards and cards in their hand to their discard pile. Then, they should draw five new cards from their draw deck. If trying to draw a card but the deck is empty, then shuffle the discards to form a new draw deck. Then, if Vicious is in play and has lost at least one resistance token this turn, he will move. Draw the top movement card and proceed with his movement steps. This completes the current player's turn. The next player clockwise should now begin their turn. 
you'll need to move your miniature to a planet with a criminal and attempt to confront them in order to win the game. To confront them, play cards or use abilities that generate you strength points or clues. The strength points can be used to remove a resistance token, and clues can be used to remove an investigation token. The cost required to spend for a single token is shown in the bottom right of its pile. Keep the capture tokens on your player board. For each resistance token you take, also draw one damage card and resolve its immediate effects. Taking investigation capture tokens does not cause damage. Players can decide the order to apply their clues and strength and don't have to spend them all. Any unspent strength or clues are lost at the end of their turn. Removing the capture tokens weakens the criminals. Once one of these stacks of capture tokens is emptied, the active player immediately captures the criminal. First, take the criminal card and place it face down to the right of their character board. Any player who has gained capture tokens matching the planet the criminal came from will get to convert them into an equal number of renown points. Take these from the supply. Players should keep them face down on their boards. Any characters on the planet where the criminal was captured are freely returned to the Bebop. No fuel is spent. If Vicious is on this planet, he remains there. Then reset the movement gauge of the planet back to 1. Next, reveal new criminal cards unless Vicious is already out. Should Vicious be drawn now, resolve his appearance steps as I discussed already. Assuming Vicious isn't out or isn't drawn, then draw two criminal cards one at a time from the top of the criminal deck. For each card, check the corresponding planet. If the planet is empty, place the new criminal there. If a criminal is already at the planet, then increase the movement gauge by one and discard the drawn criminal. However, if the gauge was already at three, then the current criminal escapes and the new criminal takes his place. Reset the movement gauge to one. If you place a criminal card on a planet, resolve any immediate effects of appearing, which typically involves refreshing the purchasing area. Then set up their resistance and investigation stacks with capture tokens for this planet. A criminal escapes when the movement gauge was at three and a newly drawn criminal increases the gauge. Discard the escaped criminal card and put the new criminal on the planet. All player characters on the planet must return to the Bebop without paying for the fuel. The movement gauge will reset back to one. Each player with capture tokens matching that planet should discard them, losing out on potential renown points. It's important to note that players who play cards that increase a planet's movement gauge will never cause a criminal to escape. If Vicious was present at the planet a criminal escaped from, he remains there. With Vicious on the board, you'll no longer draw new criminal cards. Instead, you'll have his movement deck determining where he goes. Vicious is not considered a character, so it cannot be moved because of the card's effect. Players may confront Vicious if on the same planet as him. Players can choose to confront Vicious or any criminal card present on the planet. Spend strength and clues to gain his capture tokens like normal. However, when gaining a resistance capture token, you should draw two damage cards instead of one. You must spend three clues in order to gain one investigation token from him. These do not give you damage. Once one of his capture token stacks is depleted, he will be captured. The current player takes his card face down near their board like a normal capture. The game will then end immediately. Players should convert their collected vicious tokens into renowned tokens and discard all other capture tokens. However, if the last card of his movement card is revealed, then every player gets one final turn. If Vicious is not captured before the last player's turn is over, then he escapes. All players lose their Vicious tokens. Capturing Vicious is a major victory for the collective players. However, even if he escapes, one player will still take a minor victory. Only one player will get the glory either way. As part of ending the game, remove all remaining criminals from planets and discard all collected capture tokens. These criminals manage to escape, so no renown is earned for them. Each player should count up the renown points on their collected renown tokens plus the renown points shown on captured criminals they personally captured. The player with the most renown points wins the game. If there's a tie for points, the player with the most captured criminals wins. If still a tie, they share the victory. Cowboy Bebop can also be played solo if you want to take on Vicious by yourself. The game is roughly the same, but with a few changes. During setup, create the criminal deck as if for a three-player game, using a total of 13 cards. 
That will be four criminal cards from each planet plus vicious. When you capture a criminal, still reveal two criminal cards and resolve them like normal. When you reveal vicious, also create his movement deck like normal. On his criminal card, add capture tokens as you would for a four player game. Vicious will move at the end of every turn instead of only when he loses a resistance token. Use his movement deck like normal for this. When capturing criminals while Vicious is in play, remember not to reveal new criminals. As the last movement card for Vicious is revealed, you only get one final turn to capture Vicious. If you don't capture him before this, he escapes and you lose the game. Should you capture him, add up your renown points and track your score against other solo plays. Try to beat your best and compare your wins against other solo players. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. Check the video description for links to Top Shelf Gamer for token upgrades, SleeveKings.com for a 10% off coupon on card sleeves, and Mr. Meeple t-shirts for cool board gaming shirts. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.